I have a file open that I'll be using for my first example. Now I want to start by looking at some cell, paragraph, and document properties in the case view related to roll forward. To do that, I'm going to open up the financial statements document. And we'll just bring that over to the screen once it opens up. Here we go. And I'm going to jump down to the cash flow section. Now, here you see I have a number of input cells. And if I switch to design mode and double click on cell CF5D3 to open its properties, I can then select the roll forward properties tab for this cell. Now, because I'm in the current year column and there is an override, I want to clear the input and the override flag on the cell so next year the cell reverts to its calculated value. On the roll forward tab, I can do that by checking the checkbox under options to clear input cells and clear the overridden flag. Now, if necessary, I can override the calculated value again next year by putting an input value in. This is one part of the roll forward, but there is a second part to this. So I'm going to click OK here, and I will want to make sure that the override value in the current year is transferred to the prior year column on year-end close. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to open up CF5E3, and in its properties, focusing on the roll forward tab once again, I have settings that will allow me to pull the value from another cell. So I'm pulling value by relative column reference in this case. And this will happen on the year and close roll forward. The cell has been set to pull the value from the cell one column to the left using a relative column reference offset of negative one. Also, it has been set to only pull the value if the value was overridden. Otherwise, it will just display its calculated value which is what we would be hoping for. Now we do have other ways of doing the roll forward pull. We can do none, so it doesn't pull any. A direct reference, specifying a cell number, relative reference, relative common reference, or an equation, which would open up the equation bar at the bottom. With the relative column reference selected and the offset of a negative one, it's showing the calculation of RC minus one, which is a relative column reference. Now I'm gonna click OK here because there's also pop-up cell roll for properties that I'd like to address. So a little bit further down the page, I have a pop-up cell that I created earlier today. If I double click on the pop-up cell and select the pop-up properties tab, we can see that I have some content in here. Now the selection options for the pop-up are a blank, yes, no, and not applicable. And when I click on yes, I've got that set to the default item, so that's what it would set to uh, when I clicked OK initially. However, notice that we have a roll forward default available to us. And whatever selection that the user has made in the current year, I want to reset that to blank in the following year. So on roll forward, I've set the blank to be my roll forward default selection. So again, on a year end close roll forward, the cell will revert to this value if the appropriate selection is made in the year end close dialog. And we'll look at that shortly. So you're going to click OK here. So that's two cell items that we've seen so far, the Roll Forward tab and the Pop-Up tab. Next, I want to look at the paragraph properties. Now, in a paragraph, for example, an input paragraph that I have here, I'm going to go to my Format Paragraph to open up the Paragraph Properties. On the Paragraph tab in my Paragraph Properties, we can see the option to permit editing in form mode. We also have the option to clear on roll forward. So if you're asking uh, questions of your staff and you want them to fill out a form, but that form is only pertinent to the current year, you may want to set the input paragraphs to clear on roll forward so the information will go away on the year-end close. And I'm going to click OK to accept that change.